Greetings, I'm Perrin and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. Today we are going to be doing an unboxing of Kingdom Death's expansion, The Gambler's Chest. This is something, of course, I have been waiting for and I'm sure there are many, many people out here that have been super excited to get this closer and closer to realization. It is now shipping. It is now here. This is my Kickstarter copy. I went pretty much all in on the second Kickstarter to get everything I could for this amazing game. For those of you that are interested in seeing the Core Box campaign, I have done a full video series on that. If you want to find it, I'll put maybe a link to it in the description of this video. I might even put a link up there. We'll see what I can do if my technological skills are not the greatest. But we're going to be looking through everything that is part of this box and also the gambler's chest as well. So this is primarily mostly the paper components and these are all the miniatures. These boxes are the same size lengthwise and uh, as the original core box. So they can pretty much be put right next to each other. The depth of them though, the gambler's chest is a little bit smaller than the core box's full size, but not by much. So you're getting an astronomical amount of content and the miniature box alone is pretty much almost the same size as the core box of Kingdom Death Monster. I'm going to dig into not only miniatures, but we are going to dig into everything in here. My goal is to be as spoiler free as possible, but I will not guarantee that because we're going to be opening cards and looking at some of the stuff. So just be prepared for that. But I am excited to show you what is in the gambler's chest and what is part of the miniatures here. And if you're excited to see all this Kingdom Death Monster excitement, then I need you to meet me at the table. We'll start the unboxing with the actual Gambler's Chest expansion. I will try to be putting some timestamps into this video. So if there's parts of this that you do not want to see or parts that you're really interested in, you can click to those specific areas. First, we have our punch boards that are going to be bringing new things to this game, also including new terrain pieces. These, I believe, are mostly the new terrain pieces down here. And these are going to be more tokens that you're going to be using. I believe this is a one-time reroll token. These are two new things that are going to be coming to this. One is torment, the other one is pressure, and these are going to influence the way I, the severe injuries and the trauma table affects your particular survivors. And the rest of these are all going to be tokens we're going to be using in the campaign. We also have a new showdown board, which we'll talk about in a second, and we have the new rule book. This rule book is going to cover a whole bunch of things. This is normally shrink wrapped. When you get it, I've actually opened it because I wanted to take a look and to see some of the new rules. This is made mainly the new stuff that is found in the gambler's chest, narrative sculpts, patterns, seed patterns, patterns and seed patterns, encounters, scout of death. We also have the dream keeper campaign. This box can is going to be able to do this campaign right here. I do want you to be aware though, this box cannot do this campaign alone. You do need the core box in order to play kingdom death monster and use the gambler's chest. Many of these added new elements, including the wanderers, the new monsters and the Ark survivors can be used with other elements as well, being able to mix and match to a particular point. But like I said, you do need the core box in order to use this. And most of the new elements from this particular expansion you can't just add into an already ongoing campaign. You usually have to start them when they start with the new campaign. So do bear that in mind. You can't really add these to something that you've already been working on. But these are going to be the main components that are found in here when it comes to rules. And there's a lot of rules. They're go they talk about the encounters where we might have, to where we're going to, which is what this board is part of. And I will talk about them. They have to do with the bone eaters. I also want to mention that this game is 17 plus. So anything you see here is not for kids. I also want to mention that as well. Like I said, you have Scouts of Death. This is the person that's going to bring back some of your items that you'd lost when you died. That's how it gets back here. But this now gives you the character of the Scout and things can happen to that character and sometimes your stuff might not come back. Hopefully well, that doesn't happen to you. Wanderers are going to be added. These are going to be people that are going to just kind of wander into your uh, settlement. And remember, this game is really based on the settlement. And so anything that happens there really has a big impact on how the game unfolds for you. This is going to add new things to it and they all have their own 
little books and things that go along with it. You'll see how those work. There are new monsters. I'm not going to show you every one of them, but the Crimson Crocodile is the first one that you fight, so I don't mind showing off a little bit about the Crimson Crocodile because you will see that. And now, as you go forward, you're going to have a whole new intro to the game, and then there are a lot of rules that go along with it, all the different parts that happen. So we're going to have a new core rule set. There's stuff that you're going to have to learn before playing. There are new things for the, some of the monsters are now going to have ranged attacks. There's going to have compulsive reactions. They're going to have repeat AI actions. And you're going to see a lot of that happening in the campaign that I'm going to be playing. Yes, I will be playing this campaign. Also, we'll be creating and painting up some of the miniatures for this game during my live painting episodes that I try to do at least once a week. Sadly, this game has come on the eve of the fact that Gen Con is about to happen and I am going to Gen Con. So first off, you see me there, say hi, I'd love to hear from you. But second off, I won't be able to get to this right away. It won't be probably till next week after Gen Con before I can even start working on some of the things for this particular game. So do bear that in mind. But it does have the new monsters, the Crimson Crocodile and all these in it. We have the philosophies. This is going to be a whole new set of how things work. It's all based on the Ark Survivors. This is really kind of the core of how your development of your civilization is going to happen through this particular thing. You're going to have like memories and philosophies and knowledge and collective cognition and all that is explained in these rules here. You're going to gain knowledge cards which you're going to be able to expand and there's going to be cards that even in, if you get cards that are less powerful than what you already have in your civilization because some of this can all be passed on through your civilization. You don't just lose it if your character dies for example. Uh, you're going to be able to can persist some of this. Cognit collective cognition has to do with like how well you're, you're able to eat in this game. How nourished your civilization is. You're going to be able to gain certain abilities and uh, things about that civilization. They have narrative sculpts, but from how I understand, these narrative sculpts don't play into this game right away until after you kind of complete the scenario. Then you can add these in, or if they're going to be added in based on different events that happen, which is kind of cool. It's right here, these characters and how they're going to come in. You can actually, these characters will just drop right into your game from how I understand it. But right here, it does say that the characters are not available immediately. After, they only appear after you have defeated the God Hand, which is the main bad guy in the People of the Dreams campaign. So that's from how I understand it. These are the encounters that are going to come out. This is going to be part of the hunt events, and as you as the game unfolds, these encounters will go into your hunt events, and you might have to face one of these encounters even before you get to your quarry. Be, and that's okay. If you do well in this, you can continue on going after your quarry, or you can downgrade your quarry a level if you think you might not be able to make uh, the ability to... You might not have the ability to defeat that particular quarry, you can downgrade it one after you've done one of these encounters, or you can just skip the complete quarry, And but you're actually going to have to go back with a detriment of starvation once you're done. So those are the encounters, and you'll see how those play out. Interestingly enough, they are going to have these dice on their, die, on their bases here. That's how you're going to depict their wounds. They're not going to have a wound stack of cards like you would normally have in Kingdom Death. The next thing we have are patterns. Patterns are something you're able to develop once not only there's going to be a settlement card that allows you to work through these. Also gaining uh, understanding will help you get some of these patterns, but these patterns are going to be able to develop more powerful weapons, but they might come at a cost because not only do you have to have the spear, let's for example, this one right here, you also have to have the resource here to craft that particular spear. And then you have to have that pattern in your collection in order to do it. There's also something called a seed pattern and you're going to gain those through the game and also through understanding that you have. And the thing about these these particular patterns is there are a limited number you can have in your settlement which is located here but they also have different requirements to be able to create this based on how that card performs or what you need in order to make that card come to life here is the whole rules on how the scout works the scout has a particular uh, area of the settlement that you're going to be able to get particular gear for this scout and the scout will go out on hunts once you get pictographs you're able to to use that particular thing in for the scout. It's one that actually kind of works with the scout. Of course, I have not looked at any of these things yet. I don't know what they all do. I just know that that particular have something to do with the scout. They get what's called a death pack, which is going to bring on this logistics of death. And if your whole party dies, then you're going to have to perform this logistics of death. Of course, if that is with the scout is out and about with you, which it could be or could not be. Also, the scout is going to be able to discover things about certain enemies and you're able to bring those knowledge to the battle and potentially help you in order to defeat them. The scout does have its own gear grid, which we'll see shortly as I'm unboxing, and that will be, and you're just going to be able to play out 
its own gear, but of course it does carry this backpack, which takes up a lot of the gear grid itself. Uh, the last thing, of course, like I said, it has those wanders, and we'll see how those play out as well. So it's interesting that they have all these rules right in here. And then in the back, they, and all the rest, this is going to be narrative stuff, all the different story events that happen. So I don't want to show anything more of that book, but here is that encounter board. So if you're going through your settle, or your hunt events and you come across an encounter, it's played out on this board, not on the main giant kingdom death board. And this board looks pretty awesome. And of course, the encounter will tell you exactly how to set everything up and what terrain to use and everything of that nature. Here is the gear grid for the scout. Notice it can only carry four things as opposed to the giant grid that the characters can get, which is usually a three by three grid. And it does have its dreaded pack, which gives it negative two movement. And it also has fist and tooth if you don't have any weapons or anything with you. Uh, the scout does have its own, like I said, set of rules that you're going to have to read in the book. There's a new thing here for knowledge, philosophies, and collective cognition. These are the three different components of the Ark Settlers. We'll put that aside. That is going to be part of... Now we've had paper components up the wazoo. We, <laughs> As you can tell, they have totally redone the character part here, being able to add in all the different things that are coming from the Gambler's Chest. We still have what looks like our normal set over here that you've seen and love for all of your life, along with this set as well. There is a part here that's new with the next departures, where you can write something that's going to help you decide how... What you're going to tell you what departures are happening and things of that nature. You can, of course, do your disorders, your abilities, and all these, the fighting arts and all of that. But here's the new part, the philosophies and knowledge. And these are going to be able to, from what I understand, they not only keep with your character, but they're going to be able to be brought into the civilization that you're going to write out on your civilization record sheet potentially as well. And this time, there are a ton of them. There are a lot of these records. Now, I played Kingdom Death Monster through my campaign, and they, I really think that they, they, they you, you need more of these. <laughs> Your guys die all the time. Here is a whole set of these. I'm going to rip this open and take a look. I apologize for the loud noise, but here is the new settlement sheet. This again is now a booklet that opens up and it has everything you're ever going to need all on here. And here's where you can write your philosophies that you're going to be able to keep all the knowledge that you gain. There's settlement victories you can write up here. These are your collective cognition and how much you're able points you're able to get from that. And then once you do, you're going to be able to unlock potential cards, which are right here, which we will get to. I'm not going to probably show too many of those. I might even not even show any but it'll show you what you're going to be able to get as you go through the amount of cognitive cognition you get. Collective, sorry, cognition. You're going to unlock certain cards to be able to add to your settlement. The On the back side, it does show you the nemesis, and now it shows what you're going to have for this particular uh, campaign. If you decide to play the Gambler's Chess campaign, these are the enemies you're going to be facing. The Crimson Croc, the Smog Singers, the Phoenix, the King, the Butcher, the Antness, and the Hand. Those are your main enemies here. And then, of course, there's a core person, which is going to be the gambler, that big giant guy holding the ball. You'll see who that guy is all about. And then there's also a main enemy, and that's going to be the uh, god hand is the one you're going to be fighting. The king is not written on here. Oh, there he is. I apologize. The king is right there. So here is, of course, your track that you're going to be going down as you go. It looks like it's going to be a 39 minimum of what it is. Here's your nemesis encounter for the god hand. Hand, but then I believe later you'll probably fight him for real. I don't know. I have not fully played this. I don't know anything about it. But as you can see, you do start by fighting the first Crimson Day after you fight the Prologue cro Crocodile. And a lot of this is going to be very similar to the way the first core box started. And we'll, um, it's going to be awesome. I can hardly wait to play through this thing. Uh, we're going to, of course, name your settlement and things of that nature. There are some milestones very similar to the original core game. And on the inside, it's going to have a whole list of survivors that you you have had. Look at how many you can write down. <laughs> Here's the resource and gear storage, and you can write down the patterns that you gain. You also have, of course, your innovations. This is very all the same from the last one. The settlement locations that you can check off, and your principles that you're going to be able to gain, and seed pattern, which, of course, are a little bit different from the patterns. That is what is found on here. Wow, that was pretty awesome. We're going to continue by looking into some of, not all of these decks, especially not this one that says, do not open it until instructed. That is not going to happen. There is a custom die that I do not know anything thing about. We'll put that here. It does come with a set of Kingdom Death dice, it, which do have the symbol on them right here. These are going to be the Cognitive Cognition cards. 
or collective cognition. I don't know why I call it cognition. These are going to be new dividers that you can use. These are also going to be dividers. We'll go through these as well and look at them all. And look, oh my gosh, look at all these. And from what I understand, I may be wrong, but I believe you can sleeve all of these cards and they will all go back into this particular game box. I am not going to 100%, I'm not going to fully believe I can do that until I can see it with my own eyes. These are scout discoveries. Okay, I don't really want to look at too many of these. These are, these are, I believe, are just art cards. We'll look at those in a second. These are, oh, this is, this is cool. Okay, these are the philosophies of the dreams and stuff. These are going to be little booklets. And as you gain a particular philosophy, you're going to be able to start reading through this book until you get to a part. Survivalism, I believe, is the very first one we get. So I don't mind showing a little, the first page of this book. You're going to instantly start with this from how I understand if you play through the first this campaign and so you're gonna read a little bit about it and you're gonna to have to probably make a choice or you're going to or you're going to probably have to roll a die most likely and then something's gonna happen here you're gonna to have to do, pick out one of these things and then as you gain hunt experience you're gonna proceed in ranks and you're gonna continue through this book as you with survivalism as your particular philosophy now as you can see there are many different philosophies here as you continue through there's okay this is interesting. Gourmetism, uh, regalism, homicidalism, Maroism, romanticism. Wow, look at these. Champion, lanternism, collectivism, uh, dreamism. Now, from I'm not exactly 100% sure, but I believe some of these are even from not this particular box. Like, I believe you could use some of these with the core box as well. So if you want to, maybe, for example... I'm not sure how this works, but verminism, that's hilarious. But some of these like gourmandism, this might be from the Grom expansion, but I don't think so. I think it's all going to be part of this particular box. I think those the main focus of this Kickstarter and the main focus of this game is part of that dreamer's idea. Another book I found had to do with The Wanderers. This one I, is luck. I'm not sure if this is the only book there is, but there aren't any more books presently looking at me as I mean, they can see right here. We're going to pull out the rest of these cards and go through. I'm going to show you a little bit about the crocodile, but you've, but you've seen most of the other type of monsters from previous expansions. I'm not going to show many of the monsters from that. I will show some of the gear cards, maybe from some of the first stuff you can craft. Like I said, I am not going to do this. And then we'll have to open this and see what it is. The first box is the Kingdom Death Monster Art pinup cards. They are not dual sided, but these are just different pinup cards. Oh my gosh, that's the <laughs> murderer. That's pretty awesome. Oh, this is, these are, I really enjoy the art in Kingdom Death. It was a huge, awesome, oh my gosh, that one's really cool. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Uh, and then there we are. Those are just some artwork that was brought into the game. They do come with some new hunt event cards. These are generic hunt event cards that you're going to add to your hunt event deck when the game tells you to do it. All they are is the Ark Survivor hunt event. There is a specific one for the Ark Survivors now, and there is a section in the book that has their specific hunt events. There are ones for the Bone Eaters that are going to signal an encounter that you have to do, and there's a scout hunt event when you, this one also has its own table that you're going to be rolling on. Next, we have some kind of generic cards that go with the game. One of them is the Indomitable card. Uh, it's a little bit different, from, I believe, from when it came out for the original Kingdom Death box. Uh, you can gain one random Indomitable resource, which is one of the things that spurs on seed, uh, the seed patterns from how I understand. Um, another one I'll show you is this one. There is now what is called Vibration Damage, which is a different type of damage than we've seen in the past. This damage per permeates run running, ruining armor and organs alike. Do not roll on the hit location dice this cannot be dodged add the damage of all the hits together and deal it to hit locations of your choice one point at a time after you suffer this damage archive all your fragile gear so this is another way that you can take damage now if you notice there's a very detrimental sentence in this that says deal it to a hit location of your choice one point at a time if you do not have it you're rolling severe injuries you're gonna be rolling multiple severe injuries because you're not just taking 10 damage and rolling once you're rolling for each hit from the vibration damage if you don't have armor have already gone into the serious wound area. Next we have innovations. Uh, the first one you start with, of course, is that language innovation. From how I understand it, you'll get your survival image, your encourage. That hasn't changed, but you are going to build your deck. Now, most of the innovations you start with are actually going to be the ones from the core game, not from this one. But it will tell you to replace particular ones with things that you may have used from this expansion. For example, I'm not looking at what pictograph is, but you can see up here it says scout. So if you decide to use the scout expansion part of this game, you would replace the pictograph 
to graph one from the core game with this particular one because it'll have rules that have help or hinder or potentially encourage know, the scout. But we'll see how that works. Maybe we'll get it during our playthrough. We do have some new terrain cards. One of them is, I'm going to show you this one, the Blood Pool. This is going to actually be out on your very first person. When you're fighting the very first crocodile, you're going to be playing against the Blood Pool. So again, I don't feel bad showing this because that's going to be something you're going to see immediately. But you do have the ability to do something with it. And there are a few new terrain cards here. It looks like about four that you're going to be adding to the core game. Now, of course, you're only going to add the ones that you have expansions for. So if you had all of your terrain all put together and then a big, huge stack of them in they do recommend going when playing with this campaign that you only put in the stuff that is used for this campaign and the core box itself that is going to be part of it. So for example, I would use this blood pool for this because I would be using the crocodile. The next thing we have are fighting arts. Again, you're going to be combining these with the ones from the core game, but again, you're supposed to, it, it recommends removing the ones that aren't being used for the particular monsters or parts of the expansion you're using. Here's one of them. Blood Zerker is one of them. It's from the crocodile, so it's something that I'm sure might happen pretty quickly. Uh, it, it used the Crimson Crocodile and you're going to be gaining stuff based on that. Uh, it, and we'll, and there, are a, there aren't there are very many again, but of course these are really only based on the animals and parts of the game that we're using for the Gambler's Chest. Another thing I want to mention is they do now have what is called a node system when it comes to the type of enemies that are going to be introduced into your campaign. So it gives you the ability to swap in and out different ones. So for example the level 1 nodes I believe are the White Lion, Grom, and or Gorm and the Crocodile. The level two, I believe, are the Spider, the uh, Antelope, and the one, the new one that they put in here, the Smog ones. We'll see what those are. And of course, they go on and on, including some of the new Nemesis. You can switch out certain Nemesis based on the level of the Nemesis that is there. And it shows you a whole listing of them in the book. Next, we have character cards. Of course, these aren't particularly supposed to be used until after you have completed the campaign, from what I understand. Now, I may have been wrong when I originally talked about them. I believe you can use the sculpts whenever you want. But the cards themselves that have to do with those sculpts are going to give you bonuses based on whichever one you draw out of here. And those are the things I don't believe you're supposed to start with. I think they're going to be added in as you go or it's going to be something that you can bring in once you complete it. We have some new disorders. There's a few of them here and you're going to be combining certain ones of these with of course the core game as well so you have a giant stack of disorders that you can <laughs> enjoy to your heart's content. Next we have an astronomical amount of knowledge cards. This is a super cool concept that I'm really excited about. The way this works is you're going to be able to get these knowledges multiple different ways but one of the ways you can buy them from a particular place in your settlement and once you get those you're going to be able to have them on your character. As you do certain parts of the knowledge you're going to be able to expand and improve this knowledge. This knowledge then can go back into the settlement and anybody who gains that knowledge in the future will be able to gain how much knowledge you've already gained from it. I'm going to show you one of them and it's the one that they show in the book to demonstrate what the actual thing is all about. This one is called Tenacity One. The one is what they show you in the book. I'll explain a little bit about what this, you're seeing on this card. First off, this is how much it would cost to actually buy this from the actual area of the uh, settlement. Or, But for what it has, it has its tags here and what level it is. This is what it's going to happen to you. You're going to be able to part and gain a survival token. You may spend the survival token any time to gain one survival, which is pretty cool. So you have a banked survival if you wish to. Now, if you notice down here, it says observation. When you spend the survival token, I'm going to be able to gain a blue square, which is going to be one of these. And once you're able to check off both of these, you're going to be able to advance this to Tenacity 2, which then you'll archive this and grab the Tenacity 2 card. And you'll also document that, I believe, on your settlement sheet as well in the knowledge section. You'll be able to, let's see if I can find it here, if, um, unless I'm completely wrong about this, but I believe I'm not. I think there is a whole spot on knowledge in here somewhere if I remember right. I could be wrong. Maybe it's just on the characters themselves. But I thought you get to carry... Yes, here it's a whole big section right here, of course. <laughs> You're able to write down what kind of knowledge your character has. So say in the future somebody gets tenacity again. They get tenacity, but you've already upgraded tenacity to level 3, and they only get a tenacity 1 card. They would actually gain the tenacity 3 because you've already gained that part in your civilization, at least from what I understand. So this is a huge component of the game as far as I'm concerned, because look at all of these different knowledge cards that you're able to do. These are going to be able to... You're, uh, these are things on top of like fighting arts. So fighting arts may interact with these particular knowledge cards as well. Fighting art may give you these knowledge cards, or knowledge cards might give you a fighting art. 
We're introducing some new strange resources to the game, of course, based on the different monsters we have. I do not want to show these off because, well, they're awfully strange and who knows? I don't even know how to get them. So I'd hate to show something that would happen so far into the game. Next, we have our deck of collective cognitions. And when, whenever you reach a certain milestone of the collective cognition number, you're able to reveal this card and get it. I can show you the first one because that will be part of the very beginning of the game as you on as you play through the first mission or the first lantern year, I should say. And that's going to be the facets of existence. So since I've gotten to number one, I'd be able to reveal the number one card and see what it says. And this one, it says I've attained tier philosophy, one philosophies. When you attain philosophies, they become available to you in your campaign. And then you return to the first meal, which is one of the starting story events to build the starting philosophy deck. So then we'd be moving into the philosophy part of the game as well. Remember, there's so many different tiers of this. There's collective cognitions, there's knowledge, there's philosophies. There's so many cool things that this introduces. And remember, the philosophies are all these booklets and what's going to happen to your characters and your settlements through the booklets of these different philosophies that they have. Next, we have our seed pattern cards. There are this many of them. I will show you one because it's the one they show in the book to represent what this is all about. And like I said just a little while ago, this shows you how many you can have. This gives you an idea of how to organize them. This is the card number. This tells you what particular expansions you're using for these. So if you wanted to use the king in as a a level four monster in say the core box, you could use these seed pattern cards with it, for example. Then it tells you exactly what, it uh, gives you a little bit about what is going on here about the card. It tells you what tier you're gonna be able to start using this and be able to find the items and what resources to be able to craft this from how I understand. And this tells you what you need to craft it. And this tells you a little bit of what you kind of have to have. So this one says a survivor who has, was sucked into the kingdom death lies across the anvil. So I believe that means I. I have to have had this happen to me, the sucked into kingdom death. And then it does, I'm going to be able to do, I have to pour these rip, the chest, uh, this prylox onto my chest and I'm going to gain the broken ribs. So I'm going to have to have that or get that in order to use this. And they sharpen the blade by the crock of the survivor's shattered bone. So then it's all set to go. Then you can take the heart. Then I believe you get the heart seeker item card, which is going to be in one of these, which we will see shortly. Now, of course, you're going to gain these in different ways from how I understand, maybe through story elements, or you're going to be able to gain it through uh, the innovation decks as well. There's particular cards that are going to be able to help you gain some of these. We do have some more secret fighting arts based on the monsters that are in our particular game box that we have. There's a whole sword craft deck that I believe is a deck that goes along with one of the monsters. Then, of course, we have our hunt location or hunt cards for each of the different monsters in here. We have the smog singers, the whoops, the more smog singers, the king, the uh, and the crocodile. Remember, the other one you're hunting is going to be the phoenix, which you would find in the core box. They all come with indomitable resource cards as well. And I believe you gain these if you're able to kill a level three of those particular ones. So we have ones for Smog Singers, the Phoenix. We have some for the King, and then we have some for the Crocodile as well. And these, I believe, is what you need to craft those patterns. If I'm, I, But I could be wrong. Then next we have a singleton card. I don't know what it is. We'll just put it to the side. And then these are going to be interesting. These are part of the uh, uh, fight against the crocodile. As the crocodile gets hit, he's going to like calcify different parts of his body and then have only one area that you can wound. So you have to actually stand in those locations to wound them. And what? And then you flip over this card to see what it is. That's at least from how I understand the mechanic works. Then we have our basic action card for all of the different monsters that we have in this box of the Crimson Crocodile, which of of course, we'll then have its basic action back here if you ever have to perform it. Then we have some new gear cards based on how, if you're able to get the gear, there is, for example, a sprinter armor. Uh, and then here's uh, an interesting one, a clothed and satisfied person. If you're able to just have a uh, the clothed and satisfied armor set bonus, you must be wearing at least three pieces of armor. You cannot qualify for another armor set bonus. And so if you put any three on there, you're able to flip this over and you're going to be able to add plus one to those all hit locations. So in case you ever get to that point, like you may have had, you're like, oh, I really like the uh, circle it on my guy, but it's not part of any type of thing. Now they're real, at least get this clothed and satisfied concept. Here's our deck of survive or our philosophy cards. Our first one that we're going to be able to gain no matter what is going to be survivalism. I'll just flip that one over. And really all it tells you is you get the starting philosophy of survivalism, you adopt the survivalism. So then you would go to the book of survivalism and deal with what is in there. And there's ones for all the different uh, booklets in here. And so when you gain the ability to potentially draw 
these, you're going to put those into the deck, and then when it tells you to draw a philosophy, you'll just take the top one, or you'll get the one that it tells you to do, and then, of course, you'll get the book that correlates with that particular philosophy. These will be very similar to anything you've ever played in Kingdom of Death. If you've never played Kingdom of Death before, you're going to, Monster is always going to have a certain set of AI cards and a certain set of hit locations. So, for example, I'm going to show you one of the hit location or AI cards from this deck, but it's one that they show off in the actual book to explain how it works. But you're going to gain a card like this. You're going to draw one and see what happens every turn. And for this one, for example, it's going to do whipping and slamming. It's an advanced action. And it has a new keyword that we're going to have to deal with. It's called repeat. And repeat cards, when this card is resolved, place it back on top of the AI deck face up while face up. Ignore effects that manipulate the AI deck. So you cannot like circle this out of, use a circlet or something on it, or find a way to remove this card from it unless you're able to wound the monster. Because whenever you wound a monster, you're going to remove an AI card over to the wound deck. And once all the wound, uh, AI cards are in the wound deck, you have and you've hit them with the actual base card that they start with, you've beaten the monster. So in order to get rid of this, you have to wound them. And if you don't, this thing is going to become more powerful and more powerful. As you see, it says here, uh, the monster targets in the right spot. This attack gains plus one speed and plus one damage for each token. It's going to keep gaining those tokens on this. And as you can see, this is going to, he's going to attempt to move and attack that person in that location in this position and when that's done it's also going to hit everything else in this zone it's a move in synchronetic attack so it's going to move the monster to the target to in, in, until the target is in the right spot which is that spot right there now it did say in the book that if you can't particularly make it to that exact spot it's still going to try to put that person inside of this zone at least the best it can and look at what this thing's going to do speed one three accuracy one damage after damage the person get bleed knock back oh my gosh terrible and they put it back on top of the deck. So that's really cool to have this new mechanic called repeat. I think that's really neat. And whenever you defeat a monster, you're going to gain resources that are basic and the ones that are specific to the monsters. For example, the smog eater, singers, the king. We have ones for the crocodile in here as well. So when you defeat them, you're able to gain these. And these, of course, will help you be able to create more uh, weapons and items and things that you can use in your civilization and then take out again on the hunts for the next mission. And then, of course, all the monsters do come with a hit location deck for the most part. Uh, I'll show you one of the cards. It's the one you're supposed to place on top of the very first crocodile battle, and that's going to be this one, the 99 finger spine. So basically what you see here is this one particularly is impervious, so you can't actually damage it. Uh, it it's persistent injury, and it's kept in play if you're able to critically wound it. Otherwise, it just uh, you hit a rock as it's coming out. But if you're able to critically wound, then all of this happens to it, which is kind of cool. Now, I don't want, and, and then as you're hitting, you're going to draw as many of these equal to the amount of times you actually hit the monster. Now, of course, there's usually at least one trap. There may be more. I'm never really sure what you're getting into when you're fighting a monster for the first time, which is one of the cool things about the game, is you never know exactly how it's going to react and what is found inside of this deck. So it's really kind of a neat experience whenever you fight them for the first time. Even the second, third, and fourth time, you may not have seen cards that yet in the in front that the monster has, which is really cool. There's a small deck of cards here that are either opportunity, they are red cards, or their counter. These, I believe, are used in the encounter when you fight against those bone creatures. Uh, bone eaters, I believe is what they are. I totally probably forgot what they are. I don't know. So that's what these are going to be used for. Now, if anybody's interested in how many cards there are, what size sleeves to use, and things of that nature, I'm sorry, I don't have that information um, on me readily available. So I, it might be something I can answer as time goes on. When I start doing, I do actually sleeve all of my cards, so I will at least be able to maybe help you at that point. But while the game is out and just unboxing it, I don't know the size of sleeves you need and what sleeve, how many sleeve numbers you need as well. I'm sure there are some resources out there where you can find those numbers, maybe on Board Game Geek or even at the Kingdom Death Monster site. Uh, these are going to be different types of items now that you can have. And these are going to be the seed pattern gear cards. Again, not sure if I want to show any of these off. I will show off one of these because I believe this is one of the ones they showed in the book. It's the Rawhide Headband. We've seen this all before, but now this is the one with the new pattern attached to it. So it has a little extra ability down here that allows you to turn uh, monsters into a failure of, I believe, is a the reactions, I believe, is you're able to deal with those, which is kind of neat. Of course, it has to be linked. And in case you don't know what that means, as you play through the game, you're going to have your gear grid, which is going to be a 3x3 three three grid that you gained in the core box, so it's not in this box. And the different 
items will have different colors attached to them. And if you're able to connect certain ones together, you're able to uh, ignite certain powers. For example, this one right here. So if I'm insane, this would happen if there's another card right here that can put a blue tag together. Next, we do have rare gear cards. I am definitely not showing any of these because I don't know what they are and how you're going to gain them. They do have a set of starting gear here. And I believe a lot of the, it's, it's going to be very similar to what you gain from the core box. We have uh, blood cloths. I guess you get these now instead of the other cloth that you gain from the core box. You get blood cloth. When you depart, you gain plus one insanity. You may use this as armor for any hit location. Well, that's kind of neat. So you do get to start with one of these in your possession. And then you get a founding stone when you go out. And this is all the different gear that is able to be gained through, I believe, the crafting process and potentially some of the patterns in this game. And I'll show you, I'm not going to show you the gear cards, but I'll show you the settlements, which you can show, then be able to craft some of this stuff so you can see kind of what it is and how you're able to get it. There are two sets of large cards. These are the scout discoveries, and I believe these are the things that are going to happen when she's when the person is able to investigate one of the animals that you're fighting. They can watch it and then learn these things. And these are going to be more settlement events that I believe you're going to add to the already uh, the ones that are already from the core box. Now again, any expansions you've added to those settlement events, it does kind of recommend that now you kind of use just the core box and what's in these uh, for this particular. If you decide to use this campaign, and then if you decided to sometimes switch out maybe the number one, the, what is it called? The node one at, uh, person, you would remove all the cards that have to do with that, which would be the crocodile. And then you'd add in like, let's say the white line. And then you'd add in anything that had to do with the white line. You'd put that into that campaign. I hope that makes sense. Here's the box that is on the side. I've opened it up and I believe what this is, is this is where you're going to probably be able to store all the stuff that you have in your campaign, I believe is what this is going to have. And this will have all the extra stuff that you're not using or that is, that is going to be again put in here as you continue forward. I didn't realize there are going to be more cards in there. Here are more of those character cards that we saw earlier. They're adding just more of them to this. They are some basic resource cards. There are three of them that you're going to be adding to your basic resource deck. These are just going to be perfect bones and perfect hides and perfect organ. You're going to add one to, of each of these to your resource deck. If you have the 1.6, I believe, version of Kingdom Death, I think you already have these in it, and so you're not going to add them. But if you have any, if you do not actually have these in your basic resource deck, you will be adding all three to it. Here are the pattern cards, not the seed patterns. These are the pattern cards. There were more seed pattern cards in that box as well, but these are the pattern cards. I'm going to show you one because it's the one they do show in the book at explaining what they are. Again, here's our fair, fear spear from the Crimson Crocodile. Uh, we're going to be, there can only be one in your civilization. This tells you what expansion you got it from, the Crimson Crocodile. And this you, tells you how to make it. A Crimson Glade, two bone, and a hide. And I believe you also need the fear spear to begin with and then you can create or that's how you make the fear spirit you need the crimson glade which i believe is the weapon then you have to add two bone and a high to it but of course i could be wrong we'll check in just a second the last two sets of cards we have are these uh, song cards that I'm not sure what they are. We'll have to see how those go. And I think these are cards that are going to tell us which one of the particular adversaries are going to activate during our encounters. I could be wrong, but what it is is they're just the pictures of the five of them. So I believe this is, I think that's what they are. I, again, I could be wrong. And what do you know? I am not. Here is the Bone Eaters card that tells you all about them. So if you fight them at level one, they're going to have two life, six move, and eight toughness and yes you will be fighting all of them from what i understand and here's their basic action they do not have cards from how i understand it they just have this basic action if the bone eater rolled a perfect hit in the attack drawn opportunity card so it has those smaller decks that you're gonna be able to use and it does say, it say that during the monster's turn all encounter monsters perform their basic action one at a time in order of initiative cards so that's what those were that is their initiative cards from how i understand it and then they have counter conditions as well so it's i think this is gonna be kind of a fun thing Thing to do. I think it's going to be really cool to fight at one point. Next, we have our locations. The ones I'm going to show are, I believe, are the ones you start with in the game. The first one, of course, is going to be our Keeper of Dreams. It's very similar to any of the other ones you start with. You're able to use these to innovate. You're able to buy the Bonesmith, the Organ Grinder, and the Skinnery. And those, again, are found in the core game. Uh, Groom of the Dream Keeper is once per lantern year. I can do this particular thing. Of course, I do need that. I now, if you use uh, the, you're also going to, I believe, start with this, the Forum. This is the one that you're able to gain 
gain the different knowledge cards from. You're going to start with three of them over there and you can buy them for what I understand. They have this resource now called Lumina, I believe is what it's called. And you're able to buy those for that. And you can, what says, nominate a survivor to gain one hunt XP. You can do that. Well, that's kind of cool. Rigorous study. Draw an additional random knowledge card and add it to the forum by placing it face up next to location. And during the settlement phase setup, shuffle the knowledge deck and place three cards next to it. Survivors can gain them by spending the Lumi, 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 Lumi cost listed on the card returning to the deck. The other one we're going to start with is going to be the outskirts. This is when you use the scout expansion. You're going to have this. And these are going to be the things that the scout can buy that were found in that huge giant deck of cards, those small little item decks we have. And these are going to be able to do different things for them. We've got vermin blood boots and stone face cloaks, uh, lanterns. But of course, we do need to spend the resources in order to craft these, which is really cool. Of course, and some of the things are locked behind things and this is very similar to what you've seen in the other core game of kingdom death and there are more depending on what monsters you fight or what things you unlock through the game you're going to be able to gain access to more of these particular settlements that you can craft more powerful things that can help you out in all aspects of the game that is everything that's in the box except this i'm not opening it i hope i didn't spoil too much for anybody let's quickly take a look at the miniature spurs Here's the box of miniature sprues from how I said I said spurs, <laughs> not spurs, sprues. Uh, the miniature assembly. You can go to buildkingdomdeath.com to learn how to build each of them. They are some of them are pretty intricate, and from what I understand, it doesn't come with directions inside the box. You have to you go online to find them. If they don't have them, I'm sure there's somebody out there that will have at least be able to give you a good idea with pictures and stuff on how to do them. And as you can tell, there's an astronomical amount. <laughs> astronomical amount of stuff all inside one big bag here uh we looks like we have a, let's see if we can open some of these here is the king this is going to be one that you eventually will get to hopefully at the near the very end and these are the sprues for the king at least some of them it looks really awesome this is one that they originally had in the original kingdom death monster campaign but i it was uh, i it was re, it was removed from production in the game for gameplay purposes because they just couldn't get it to what they want it to be. One thing that's really unique about Poots and his design team is if they're not satisfied with something, they will keep going with it until they get it to the point of perfection in their eyes, which is a, which then, of course, leads us to be able to play an almost perfect game, which is amazing. And that's kind of what I think of as Kingdom Death. So that's just one of them. I'm not probably going to open all of these, but I'll open a few of these to look at. Who do we have here? Oh, I think this is the Santa Claus type guy, Antits or something. I probably can't pronounce his name right, but it does show his little cloak down here. It has some of the cloak and everything that goes along with it. And you're going to probably connect together. From what I understand, this guy eats kids, which is out of control. Uh, <laughs> it's, that's kingdom death for you. That one's pretty awesome. It looks like here is part of the crocodile that you're going to have to build. And again, like I said, you do have to build all these. And I will be doing a build episode at some point after Gen Con. Maybe we'll put together the crocodile so you can see how it all puts put together. And I will work really hard to make sure that it's easily understandable how you put this thing together. But they do have the crocodile. Now, these are unique. These are the different... Uh, item things that you can place on your characters to make them all individually just like you want them. And I actually have a, think I have a video on my channel on how to magnetize your characters so that you can go ahead and switch out the ones to whatever gear they're wearing, which is kind of cool. I like doing that. Now, I don't know how far back in my library I did the magnetizing episode, but I think it might have been one of my live things or I did a recording of how I was able to do it. If we continue on, here's the gambler's uh, the gambler's uh, ball that is going to have a whole bunch of things attached to it. I wonder if they're in here somewhere. What are these? These look like oh, these look like some of the uh, signature mon or signature characters that you can use in place of the actual survivors if you wanted to. For example, this one looks like oh my god, I can't tell what this guy's holding. Oh my gosh, look at this! Is out of control. I don't even know what this is, but that's awesome. There's a miniature. Do we have better luck with this one? This one looks like it has butcher cleavers. Okay. <laughs> this one, for example, is a one who has cleavers. Uh, and you assemble the character with the cleavers and everything, and it looks awesome. You have to cut them off of these things with clippers and sand them down a little bit to get the cool little shaving things off, and you can glue them together. It's pretty awesome. These are the bases for everything you see in the game. That's a lot of bases. Except for this one. This one comes with its own base here. I guess a big, huge, giant base and a miniature inside there as well. Wow, I don't know if I'm going to get through all this. It's out of control. 
Here's more, I believe, of, oh no, this is probably the God Hand, maybe, I would guess. Again, not entirely 100% sure about all of this. More stuff here. Another guy, a couple guys here that you can put together. Wow, just so much. And I apologize for the glare off the bags, but there's not much I can do about that. Here's part of the gambler's chest, or gambler, the ball that the gambler is holding. This is pretty neat. Look at these. From how I understand it, each one of these was individually drawn and sculpted for this. There wasn't even a single one of these that was duplicated exactly. There wasn't like a cut and paste type concept. I believe from what I understand, they individually made every single one of these on here. So the, this I think is gonna fit up into here like that. And then, oh my gosh, there's so many awesome things in here. And there's so many, here's another one of those just for the ball. This is another set of, uh, I think these are more of those characters. And what is this big, huge guy? This is gonna be more of Antius, I believe. And again, probably pronounced that wrong. But he's got kids in here. Oh my gosh, that's gnarly. All right, let's see what else. More of the uh, characters. And then this looks, oh, he's, it must be just a huge miniature. Here is yet again, another one of his sprues right here. This is another one of his sprues. Look at this, all these kids hanging down, kind of like a beard, all of these hands coming down here. That's unbelievable. That's amazing. There's, this must be more of the crocodile maybe. Oh no, these are, yeah, this is more of the crocodile. Maybe the other one wasn't the crocodile, but here's the head of the crocodile I can see right here. I'm just gonna quickly get this out of here. There's the crocodile's head right there in all its glory. The uh, the Kingdom Death miniatures are probably some of the best miniatures out there when it comes to the actual uh, design of them, how they're put together, and the uh, sheer, what do you call it, uh, just what they look like. They just look phenomenal. They have such uh, detail on them. It, they're, they're really, really awesome. They're pretty much the top of the market when it comes to those things. Here's some bases, some more stuff. Is there, even, is there anything else in here? It's got, look at this. This is all weapons and stuff for characters. All weapons and stuff for characters. Out of control. And we have more here. More weapons and stuff for characters. Oh, these, these are a set of characters. And these are for your survivors. You want to hit... Oh my gosh. Look, they got a Batleth. Is that a Batleth? No way. That's absolutely amazing. Look at this. Looks like a Batleth right here. That is super cool. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. All right. Let's keep going here. Digging through this. <laughs> Can't stop. Can't stop. Oh my gosh. You got more... Here we go. Here are the uh, smog, uh, what do you call them? The smog, I can't remember the exact name, but the smog characters here. Here they are, you're gonna glue them. Now I believe there's three of them. So I believe there's, and this looks like there's probably one, two, and three. So I think all of them are on this sprue to be able to make, which is cool. Oh, here's more of that ball again that you're gonna have to glue together. Oof, da. that's a lot of stuff. So, <laughs> and they just keep going with more of the, uh, characters and more weapon and uh, outfit options for your survivors here it looks like oh wow this is unbelievable and they have different heads and arms and everything so woof -da, lots of stuff so there you have it. I stopped right there. I hope you don't mind, but it was just going to be sprue after sprue after sprue, and I have to take them out of those bags. <laughs> Otherwise, it glares off my apologize. But that's the unboxing of Kingdom Death Monsters Gambler's Chest Expansion. This has been something I've been waiting for for a long time. This is going to hit my channel super fast, super excited. We're going to be doing a build episode. We're doing painting episodes. We're going to be playing Kingdom Death Monster, the Gambler's Chest Expansion, as soon as I get back from Gen Con. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the unboxing of the Gambler's Chest expansion. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so we'll see you know when more content comes out for the Gambler's Chest. Also, please feel free to leave anything in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone. If you do enjoy what I do here, please, you can check out the link to the Patreon. That is in the description as well. Those that have joined the Patreon are found here on the screen, and they are able to gain some benefits. One of them is any playthroughs I do, I usually put up a day or two early without commercial interruptions for Patreon people. They also get to decide what games we play. Also, they help me decide who plays in them and how we go forward with the characters. I may have them be able to help me name the characters for Kingdom Death, and as we move forward, what we might want to craft for our characters and what we might want to hunt. I'll be putting that into my Patreon as a poll, and people can be able to vote on those kind of things so that they also have a way of influencing how the game comes out. So there you have it, Kingdom Death Monsters, the Gambler's Chess Expansion. Thank you again so much for watching. And if you're excited to see Kingdom Death or anything else, then I need you to meet me at the table.